Merry COBOL! If programming languages were actual languages, Java would probably be French, C++ would definitely be English, and C would most likely be German. COBOL, though, would probably have to be classical Latin. It's useful in a very specific context, but outside of that very specific context, nobody really uses it anymore. One interesting thing that happened relating to COBOL recently is that apparently, in the United States, the servers that process unemployment requests started to fail because all the requests were being made to COBOL code that couldn't handle all of those requests. So COBOL programmers, which are about as rare as sea turtles these days, were urgently in demand. What this shows is that COBOL should maybe be phased into something more modern. Because soon there will be pretty much nobody that knows it. But who cares about the world collapsing due to COBOL refusing to die? You guys just want to see me do something stupid with it! So today, I'm gonna make a nice game of tic-tac-toe. Like that one movie. Tic-tac-toe? What's that? I've never heard of it! <laughs> Are you serious? Uh, yes? Okay then. Tic-tac-toe is a board game that is played on a 3x3 grid of cells. One player plays as X, and one player plays as O. They alternate placing their pieces until someone gets three in a row of their symbol, or the board fills up. The first player that makes three in a row wins. So, while tic-tac-toe might be writable using a text-based interface where you type the X and Y coordinate of your cell, I thought it would be more user-friendly, especially for users like our friend C-Tail over here, if the game had a nice point-and-click interface. Now, you may be asking, if COBOL was made before computer graphics were even... a thing, how would you make a graphical user interface with it? And the answer to that is... Visual COBOL! For Visual Studio. Because I guess Visual Basic wasn't absurd enough. Now, before the video proceeds, from this point on, COBOL code will be displayed on screen. If you have a condition that makes it physically painful to look at verbose code, proceed at your own risk. So, in the Working Storage section of the program, we create a 3x3 table of buttons to represent the playfield. Yes, it's called a table. We also create a turn string that holds the current player taking their turn, represented as either an X or an O. Finally, we have a label used to display the current player's turn. When the game loads, a perform loop is used to generate all of the buttons. Their size, position, default text, and method that happens when clicked are all set in this loop before the button is added to the form. Also, the turn string is set to X, because X goes first. Wait a second, those initial values are 1, and it is performing until 4. Does COBOL start indexing at 1 instead of 0? Yes! Grr, you're dead to me, COBOL. Even though COBOL's been a dying language since the 1980s, and it has just refused to die. So anyway, at this point, we now have an empty playing field. Clicking a button calls a blank method, so now it's time to give that method a body. A visual COBOL method that corresponds to an event contains two parameters, the object that the event corresponds to, and the event itself. And those two parameters are specified like this. What, are you unable to tell where the parameters start and end? Well, let me just highlight them! Yeah, that's right, not only do the method headers take up two lines for some reason, but unless you're paying really close attention, the parameters kinda just blur together unless you read it really, really carefully. And yes! This is how it was set up by default. I don't know why. Now you may have noticed that the sender was sent as type object, but in order to change the text of the button, the sender needs to be of type button. So we need to do a cast. To cast it, you just say sender as type button, but since that would get annoyingly redundant really quickly, it's worth it just to create another variable and store the cast into it. Luckily, the rest of the button click method is pretty much what you would expect. If the button is blank, it sets the button's text to the current symbol stored in turn and then flips that symbol. After flipping the symbol, it updates the info label with the new information. So, now the game has a functioning user interface. Yay. What are you talking about, idiot? The interface doesn't work! When a player wins, nothing happens! Fix it! Well, that's because the check winner function, invoked after every button click, is blank. So, now it must be implemented. First, my code checks the rows of the board. If all the symbols in the row are the same and they aren't blank, a player has won, so we tell the info label that that player is the winner. The way of doing this is pretty straightforward. It just involves a really long if statement. 
Well, 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 would you look at this. Even in the programming language that was designed to be readable, the code is pretty unreadable. If you want to read it, you need to use the scroll bar. <laughs> Man, isn't unreadable code just the best? Hey, Obfuscate. Stupid turtle mortal! You really know how to take the fun out of things, don't you? So yeah, it's kind of just hard-coded in like that. I know, it sucks, but it's fine for a simple project like this. If we have a winner, the setWinner function is invoked on the coordinates of x, 1. The columns are just an index-flipped version of the rows. Not much to comment on there. And then there's the diags. We don't talk about the diags. So anyway, that's all the checks to see if a player has won. Now we just need to implement the setWinner function. The setWinner function is fairly simple. If the cell at the coordinates passed in contain an O, the info box is set to O wins. Otherwise, X must have won, so it's set to X wins. So, now the game is playable! Well, it's kind of annoying to need to reopen the executable after every game. Could you add a restart button? Sure! The restart button calls the restart game function when clicked. That function loops for all the cells, sets them to blank, and then sets the turn to X. The effect is completely resetting the game board, so now if you want to restart the game, you just need to click this button. So, now that the tic-tac-toe game is done, Tootie, I challenge you to a game of tic-tac-toe! Best two out of three! Oh, you're on, lizard! A draw! Great! Don't get complacent, Idex. This is just part of my master plan. <laughs> Draw. Well, I'm gonna win this time. Mm. You know, I think that computer from War Games may have been onto something. Games game. The only winning mood is not to play. And now that you mention that, for whatever reason, I'm really hungry for Burger King right now. You know what? Me too. Man, it sure is a good thing reptiles can't catch the coronavirus. I'll race you there. Anyway, thanks for watching, and have a merry cobal. Have a holly jolly cobal, it's the best time of the year. I don't know if there'll be snow, but have a cup of cheer. Have a holly jolly cobalt, and if you walk down the street, you should know that all the code is cobalt going beep beep. Oh ho, the cobalt code, verbose as it can be. It's on a big frame frame, making sure the planet doesn't collapse. Have a holly jolly cobalt, and in case you didn't hear, oh by golly, have a holly jolly cobalt this year, yay!